Hi, I'm Anne and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing another book haul. Yes, I know I have been trying not to buy books, but I just go to my dollar book swap and everything there is a dollar and I can't resist buying books. But I'm hoping that I do not buy any more books for myself until the end of the year and then at the end of the year that I do a book on haul and get rid of a whole bunch of books to be equivalent. Also, also, I just started this candle behind me and it has this little crackling sound to it. I'm gonna put it next to my microphone to see if you can like hear it. I don't know if you could actually hear that, but I absolutely love the crackling candles. Anyway, it's fall and I'm in the mood for crackling candles and like everything fall related. All of these books are classics except for one, so I'm going to get the non-classic out of the way and then we're going to jump into a very fun classic book haul. So the first one is Jonathan Strange and Mr. Noro by Susanna Clarke. This book I've heard described as like part fantasy, part mystery, part history. It is, I believe, set in like the 1800s, but there's also like magic and different dimensions and it follows these two very different magicians. Obviously, I assume Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell are the two magicians and it is a whopper of a book. Uh, it is over, well, I guess my copy is about 850 pages, so it's not quite a thousand pages. But it's a big, big book to read, but it's one that I've been wanting to read for a long time. Now we're going to get into the classics. The first classic I bought is The Peloponnesian War by Thucydides. Thucydides was this uh, Greek historian during, I believe, the 300s. Um, he was slightly later than Herodotus, and I know Herodotus was like 400s. So he wrote about Peloponnesian War, which is the war between Sparta and Athens, similar to the way that uh, Herodotus, who I'm currently reading, his histories talk about the war between the Persians and the Greek city-states. I actually bought this book a few months ago, and then I learned that for my Greek historiography class, I'd be reading it and I was required to buy this book, which is the exact same book. But as you can see, um, they're slightly different sizes. And I realize that it's actually gonna be great to have the smaller one to take to class this semester because carrying this thing around in my school bag is an absolute nightmare. The next two I featured on my oldest books that I own because again I bought them a while ago. Uh, the first one is Utopia by Thomas More. I already own a copy of this. Uh, it's somewhere back there. I don't know. It's the brown one. But uh, this copy was just absolutely beautiful and it also contains both Utopia and the Dialogue of Comfort. I've read the Dialogue of Comfort. It's basically what Thomas More wrote before he was going to be executed by Henry VIII. He was an advisor to Henry VIII, who was a Catholic theologian, and he disagreed with Henry VIII, divorcing Catherine and marrying Anne Boleyn. And as history would prove, his concern was justified. <laughs> the next book I also talked about in my oldest books that I own, and that is The Modern, a Modern Martyr. It's about a man who travels to uh, Southeast Asia, or I should say a priest, a Catholic priest who travels to Southeast Asia and ends up being uh, killed there. But it's his biography of where he came from. I believe he was French. I'm gonna go through the ones that I'm not super familiar with uh, that I kind of bought on a lark because that makes more sense. And the first one is uh, Molière, a uh, French author, from the 1600s, he wrote comedy plays. And I found this collection in Penguin Classics. I've been trying to collect more of the Penguin Classics because I just think they're such good translations. But uh, obviously it says he wrote The Miser. I don't know anything about him, but he was compared at the back with Shakespeare having a very similar feel. So it made me uh, wanna pick it up and read it. The next book is China and Me. It doesn't really, you probably can't see that, uh, by Emily Han. So this woman traveled throughout China 
I believe in the either 30s or 40s, and she later wrote an autobiography about her experiences there. And so that's why it's called China and Me. And I am really interested in the experience of people unfamiliar with cultures. The thing is, if you read a lot of Chinese novels and things like that, they take a lot of for granted because this is their society. Whereas when a foreigner uh, enters like Chinese soil or Japanese or Korean soil, they have no prior knowledge or association to which to compare the culture and society of China. So a lot of things uh, are considered like weirder to them because it's foreign, it's, it's not common. So they make reference to a lot of things that you wouldn't find so much in Chinese writing. Uh, the next one is similar, but I'm not for sure if I'll like it as much. It's called The Mandarin by Robert Elegant. Imagine having the last name of Elegant. But this is a fiction novel set in uh, Shanghai slash China around the turn of the 19th, mid 19th century during the Taiping Rebellion. But it's I believe a family saga slash romance that follows two families as they survive the Taiping uh, Rebellion, as well as a lot of advancements in Chinese culture and society during that time. You have railroads being made, you have uh, Shanghai becoming what it was later on, just this, this massive cultural amalgamation of like different cultures and societies in like one city. It sounds like a really interesting book, but again, it's like romance and fiction. So I'm not for sure how much I will love like the actual story as much as the setting. Next book is this very lovely book and you, you probably won't be able to see that writing, but it says Fenmore Cooper on it. Um, this is Deerslayer. Uh, Deerslayer is from the, the first book, of James Fenmore Cooper. His most famous work is The Last of the Mohicans. My mother owns a complete collection of his and I haven't actively read his, even though as a child I read uh, several abridged versions of his books, but it's not the same as reading like an adult version. So I need to go back and read all of his. Now we've got The Seahawk by Raphael Sabatini. I talked about in my underrated classic books that one of my favorite books of all time and probably the best pirate novel of all time is Captain Blood, which is right here. You probably can't see it, but I absolutely love that book. And this is by the same author. This is also a high seas pirate novel as far as I'm aware. Uh, it talks about like the Bar Barbary pirates. So I assume it is set during the mid 1800s. It sounds intriguing. I'm interested uh, and it was a dollar. So I was like, I know that I have liked Raphael Sabatini's other books. So hopefully I'll like this one. All right, the next ones I have, I have two kind of by this author um, and that is Dorothy L. Sayers. I'm trying to collect all her books. I would love to own all her books, but this first one is a collection of short stories and it says the complete collection of all the Lord Peter Whimsey stories. Um, by stories, they mean like short stories, not books. So I was excited because I have a few of her books, but I haven't been able to read many of her short stories. I don't think I've read any of her short stories about him. So I was really excited to find this. And I got a second book kind of by her, and that is Thrones Dominions by Dorothy L. Sayers and Jill Patton Walsh. So what happened was when Dorothy Sayers died, she had a uncompleted novel about Harriet Vane and Lord Peter Wimsley. They had their honeymoon in Busman's Honeymoon, which I'm actually hoping to read either this month or next month. That was the f one of the final books she wrote and the final book featuring Harriet Vane. And for me, even though I love the Lord Peter Wimsley mysteries, I love Harriet Vane so much more. So I was really happy to see this because um, Wash pretty much took the uncompleted copy of the final book by uh, Dorothy L. Sayers and she completed it. So this is kind of half Dorothy Th Sayers, half this other woman, technically not a classic, but I'm putting it in here because Dorothy L. Sayers did write part of it and that part of it is the classic part. 
but I'm curious because I know that Wash continued on in this series, but it was completely her own work. So I'm curious to see, especially with this one versus the second book of the series, I'm going to try to find the second book as well to see if I enjoy it because I just love Harriet Vane and Lord Peter Winsley and I want more books by them. Now let's get to a bunch of like smaller books I got. I got Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. I have read this book. I love this book. It's a pretty much an examination of Lewis's belief in Christianity. It is considered one of the greatest theological uh, modern works. The next one is one of my favorite movies when I was a child was called The Last Unicorn. It was either from the 70s or the in 80s and there's quite some terrifying scenes in it but it's basically about the last unicorn and figuring out what happened to the rest of the unicorns. She's trying to find uh, people who are like her and she ends up meeting a bunch of unique individuals along the way and it, it is an exceptional movie quite dark for a children's movie but i enjoyed it and there's a book that uh it was based on the movie was based on the book uh and it's the last unicorn by peter s beagle so i know nothing about this book i don't know how similar it is to the movie uh, the next one is the hollow by agatha christie i'm just trying to collect all of agatha christie's books by this point i don't think i've read this one i know i've seen the movie of it um but i don't think i have read it it's an acute novel. The next one is Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. I've read this. I love this book, but I do not own a copy of it. So I was really excited to find this. Everything by Ray Bradbury is great. I said that in my last video. I say it again this video. Next one is Tales of Greek Heroes by Roger Laslin Green. It is a collection of children's stories about like Greek heroes. So for example, it has the tale of Prometheus, um, Typhon the Terrible, uh, Hercules, of course, the quest for the Golden Fleece, the return of the Argonauts, um, the first fall of Troy. So a lot of ones that a lot of people are familiar with. It also has an introduction by Rick Riordan, who wrote um, the Percy Jackson series. So it makes sense because clearly he's into Greek tales. <laughs> Next one is Charles Dickens' Bleak House. I have read so many of Charles Dickens' books and every single book I read by him, I adore. Um, Little Dorrit is probably my favorite one. I just love it so much, but You Have Great Expectations is amazing. You have, of course, The Christmas Carol, Oliver Twist. There's so many great ones I could go on forever, but I have not read Bleak House. Considering how much I love Charles Dickens and how many of his books I've read, I'm, I'm just surprised that I haven't read this book but it is quite a long book so it'll probably take me a while and the final book is the fairy queen by Esmond edmund spencer this again is a massive book it is a epic poem i would say edmund spencer was i believe a contemporary of shakespeare unless he lived slightly after i'm not sure it is filled of course with tales of fantasy and fairies and things like that. I read excerpts of this during my survey of British literature in college the first time I went to college and I really enjoyed that class but we only read like 10 pages of this or something like that and it really made me interested to read more and I don't even remember what the excerpt was about but it had the fairy queen in it and it had like her entourage arriving and just the poetic language was just absolutely breathtaking. So I have wanted to read the original since then and I found the Penguin Classics edition which I was very excited about but it is also um like 1200 pages it looks like so I will be adding all of these to my you can't see it right now but to my jar of books that I own that I want to read that I will pull from next month and I hope I am determined to not buy more books until the end of the year. Uh, if anything, I'll receive some books for Christmas and then my birthday, which is in January, but we will, we will see if I can say stay strong and be firm. <laughs> Have you read any of these books? Uh, do any of them look interesting to read? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you have not already, like, subscribe. Uh, I post every Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern time and I will see you all in the next video. Have a great week. Bye!